We were out here and we broke ground last fall. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but those of us who drive by a lot have been watching it, watching it grow. Has anybody been keeping track of this thing as it grows out of the ground? It's pretty cool. But, you know, they say that we're here. Woo, we got construction going on. They're not going to slow down. These guys are working hard and fast. They say that we're here because it's the 50% celebration, but we're doing better than that. I'm told we're at 65%. And then we're gonna be back here on March the 29th or somewhere thereabouts, and we're gonna cut a ribbon. You know, you know what happens when you cut a ribbon? You go inside and you play and you use the building. So that's gonna happen in March. But we really wanted to celebrate this because so many of us are so excited about it. Um, you know, two decades of fighting to get this done. So many people that got involved in that battle. When I was, you know, just getting involved four years ago and running for office, I heard about this. I think Pete Smith called me and Lisa Shore. And I went to a couple of meetings and heard the story about how there used to be a plan that might have been a community health clinic and then the the organization that was going to do that went under and then there was a there was a decision made by county government that we don't do community centers in Anne Arundel County and that kind of killed it for a while but y'all never gave up there you are Miss G <laughs> y'all never gave up and uh, here we are so um, you know thank you to Mrs. G Lisa Shore Nikki Butler Pete Smith. Really, there's a whole group of people who just kept on meeting about this project even when there was no support for it. So that's why we're making such a big deal because we're so excited about it. So I think you know there's going to be in here a Boys and Girls Club, there's going to be an Anne Arundel County Senior Center, and there's going to be a community space, and there's going to be a basketball, there's going to be a gymnasium, and a lot of places to hang out and do, do programming and do really cool stuff. Um, and we need it in this neighborhood. And uh, so I want to also thank, of course, uh, now we're talking about funding and things, like a lot of funding here. We're talking about $16 million almost it got to. We used to say it was 13, then it got to be 14, then it got to be 15. <laughs> but um, thank you to our local development council, our LDC. They make decisions, they, make, they advise the county on how to, spend, how to spend the casino money. So thank you to Live Casino as well. And thank you to all the people who lost money uh, on the slots there because they're they're paying for a big chunk of this. Uh, but I'm sure they had fun doing that. Um, thank you to our county council as well. Councilwoman Sarah Lacey is here who represents the district. Thank you for... Councilwoman Lacey has been a huge, huge, huge advocate for this from the beginning. And then our District 32 representatives from the General Assembly because they got us some money too. So we have Senator Pam Bidel and we have... Do we have Delegate Mark Chang, Sandy Bartlett? There's Mark. Sandy here. I think Sandy is, is not here taking care of some families. Mike Rogers here? Well, thank you. Mike Rogers has been a huge advocate as well. Okay. And we got Nikki Butler here. Mike, Mike too. Um, and um, and uh, the state of Maryland and, around, and, of course, Anne Arundel Community Development Services that does um, really made this happen, put the plan together. <clears throat> has managed the whole process, the construction process, the planning for what will go in here. Um, and uh, so we thank them as well. And the Board of Education, because this land actually was owned by the Board of Education connected to Van Bocklin Elementary School, and we had to get them to give it to the county. The county bought it initially, and they had to give it back. And uh, so thank you to the Board of Education. Um, and thank you to the contractors, TMI. Do we have people here from TMI, the contractor that's got us at 65%? And the architect Murphy and Dittenhafer. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's right. All right, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, so we're going to do a couple things. We are going to get to go inside and take a look, but we also have a time capsule here. And the way the time capsule works is that we are in 2022 now, and people are going to put some things into this capsule, and it's not going to get opened until 2040. And uh, they're going to, the, the, the things they're going to put in there, ooh, I see a few of them. I know you guys have some as well. Um, it's how people feel about the Severn Center today, how they feel about this community today, and, um, and how they envision this community being in the year 2040. 
So folks will look, open that up and they'll see whether or not we accomplish some of the goals that we have for this community by the year 2040. So first I want to introduce some, um, some students who are going to talk about, I think what they're putting into the time capsule, right? Is that what you guys are going to talk about? Yeah? You've been working on this? So from Van Bocklin, uh, we have Ryan Anwuka and Brianna Diaz. Are you why don't you, you come up? Who's, who are you? Brian? No. You? Brianna Das and Ryan? Come on over. And we also want, from Hebron Harmon, we want uh, Kavian Rivers and Julian Jarquin. Jarquin? Yarkin. Okay. Um, so, um, do I need to lower the microphone? Yeah. Here, I'll put it over here so you can stand to the side. Whoop. How about that? Who goes first? No, she does. Okay. Girl power. Girl power. Yeah. Come on up where they can see you. Okay, so I'm going to read the question, you read the oh, answer, no. okay? It says, what would you tell your future self about the present, about now? You read that part. I would tell myself the iPhone 14 came out, and I would also tell myself to never give up. Yeah. What are your thoughts about the Severn Center currently under construction, expected to be completed in early 2023? I think the Severn Center would be awesome there are a lot of things to do and I hope there will have a meeting center. Awesome. And Vision 2040, what do you envision your community to look like in the year 2040? I think my community will be different because my they might add a gym and they're going to add a pool. Some people will speak different languages. Awesome. Speak different uh, languages. All right. So let's pass it on. Who gets it next? Good job. Name, you got it. My name is Ryan Onuka. I would um, tell myself you should be a, a soccer player and a quarter because I've been doing a lot of practice and right now in this time. And I think how I think it's going to be in the future in 20 and um, no, 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 um I think that um, when it should be completed there's probably the there might be a pool and the games that everyone might want to play. In 2040, um, I think they should have um, um, like better technology with virtual reality games and like a different type of car that can probably flip the car, that can probably flip their tires. They can do what with the tires? <laughs> with flip the tires. Oh, wow. Good idea. That's going in the... So that's going to go in the time capsule, right? Who's next? I would tell my future self that I am faster now than I when I was slower before. <laughs> the center might have new staffs and new teachers and a new area. There might also be a playroom. I want it to, I want I want it to have more trash cans and people to follow the rules and not having pit bull dogs because that is the rule. All right. No more litter. I would tell my future self about the present and that the Queen of England died not too long ago. Yeah. Also in the new Severn Center at recess, we will get to have a lot of fun on the playground. Lastly, in the year 2040, I think we will all be having fun together at the Severn Center. Woo woo! All right. So that's all going into the time capsule, right? But first, if we're talking about the future, we need to have Russell Jones up here because he's the chair of the Area Agency on Aging Advi uh, Advisory Council. Is Russell here? Yes, come on up. It's kind of hard to follow this show, I'll tell you that. And I want to thank uh, Stuart and uh, our executive and also the county for uh, 
for funding. Uh, that's an important thought, thing of what we have. Um, the Department of Aging uh, has the council that we're responsible for, and uh, we represent most of the senior centers. We're very excited to have this as part of that. Um, we're all volunteers, and um, I'd like to acknowledge all the volunteers that are here uh, for what they do and speak a little bit about it. And I would just want to say thank you if you're a volunteer. Um, I think the great thing about this intergenerational uh, community center is an opportunity for the young and the old to work together. It may hopefully forge new relationships between the young and the old. Uh, I can actually see this, the youth mentoring the seniors uh, from a place like this. And uh, that would be a first. This is a first for our county. Um, so often we take things for granted, the services that we receive, and um, I think the office of the county executive has been very good about that. The council's been great about funding things, and I think we're in a great county, and uh, I think we should be thankful for the county we live in. Um, for those of you who are thinking about giving back to your community, uh, I want you to consider volunteering, all right? Uh, how can you start participating? Well, next time you attend a center, this center, a youth center, um, and you're going to take advantage of many of the activities available, just ask someone, how can I help? Uh, perhaps you have a specific skill. Can you teach a class on that skill? Uh, is there any activity upcoming that you can assist with? Maybe you can volunteer to provide a ride for someone with no transportation. Uh, being a volunteer is a great way to help other people and a great way to give back. So on that note, I want to say thank you uh, very much for letting me share this day with you. And um, I hope to see you all when they when the time, when the time capsule is opened. I hope I'm there. Thank you. All right. So we have two things that we have to do. One is to close the time capsule. So can we have, um, let's see, all of the students and the seniors and Nikki Butler and the history committee and any others who participated in the time capsule project to join us up front. Is the stuff in there already? Or we're putting yes. stuff? Okay. So all we have to do is close it? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. And then the other thing we're going to do right after that is we're going to do a blessing of the bricks and unveil the cornerstone. But let's get this first. So it's, it's all in there, right? You all want to roll yeah, yours up and try yeah. Well, so we did get those papers from the students. Oh, good. Put these in for good measure just in case. Put some food in there or anything. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want rodents in the community center. Okay, nice. So, but do you want to just say what this is? Yeah. No, we'll put it in there. So, we have some history elements that we're going to add in. So, this is a surprise Miss G does not know. There's some articles that we have from 2006, a piece that she wrote, and it's titled A Dream Fulfilled, Mrs. G in Severn. We've got some more articles. This is when we first got the first LBC check for this in 2014 or 13. And just some more articles detailing this over the last 30 years and how we've fought for this and Ms. She has been an extreme, extreme advocate to have something in our neighborhood. Thank you. So I understand that all of the senior centers in the county contributed things and put it in the time capsule as well. And we, the, also the public libraries. And the libraries. Okay. People from the general public. And 
But I got a wrench. <laughs> I think we have one on site. So we're going to take this back to the construction trailer and put the rest of the bolts on after the ceremony. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you can go in. Make it sealed. There we go. All right. Where's it going to be kept? We actually have a display case that will be in the middle, kind of on the seat. Oh. I'm loud enough. We have a display case that we were graciously enough, graciously gifted enough space in the senior center side to have a display case, which will be right here when you enter, as soon as you enter. Um, and behind that, we're gonna place the time capsule. So it'll be easily removable in 2040, so we can look at our stuff. All right. All right, so we got our time capsule done, and now we're gonna do the unveiling of the cornerstone. Where is that? To your right. Oh, okay. <laughs> and but first, the blessing of the bricks. Bishop Palmer, Antonio Palmer, is he here? Yes. Come bless the bricks, Apostle Palmer. I want to say thank you to County Executive, um, also Aaron, uh, for this opportunity to pray. Shall we pray? Uh, gracious Father, you're the Creator of all things. We gather here today to give you thanks for your goodness and your heart towards us and your eyes looking upon us with kindness and favor. Today is a historic day where we are at a halfway point in the building of the Severin Center that will house activities and programs for the Severin community uh, that will help give opportunity for those uh, who are in need. Let it truly be a safe haven for the marginalized. As we place the different artifacts into a time capsule, let our hearts be filled with excitement and let those who may receive the artifacts in the future realize the great efforts birthed from those who participated in making this dream come true, uh, that they will continue the legacy of doing good we now thank you for the health of all the construction workers. We ask that you would keep them from injury until the building is completed. Now we ask for a special blessing upon brick, upon brick, um, even the chief cornerstone, uh, that uh, everything will be mounted accordingly and that all the bricks will last throughout generations. Uh, and along with the bricks will come people dwelling and coming and communing with laughter and joy and peace. This we thank you and we pray in your eternal name always. Amen and amen. Amen. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Apostle, and welcome back. <laughs> oh, thank you. So uh, before we unveil the cornerstone, Mrs. G got started on this campaign many years ago. Would you like to share a few words? Wow. I never thought I would be here to see this. But I believe that God was going to keep me here because I love him. So as you all know, I walk around saying, let there be justice all over this place. And let they love mercy and to walk humble with the Lord. You know, Ern, you believe in what I have to say. I told you, everything we do, you tell me and what do I do? I go and pray. And every time I pray, it turns out all right. But I got a, I got a gift today. Can I read it to you?
a lady came up to me and said, Miss G. I said, yeah, that's what they call me. <laughs> she said, I got something for you. Congratulations, she said. And what, what she, when she gave me this here card, she was telling me some things. And he said, okay. Years ago, you told me about your dreams for a Severn Community Center. I remembered your words, I won't give up. Yay. With love. The lady's name is Diana. She said, you probably won't remember me or my name. But for someone that could stand up and come to and say that to me from years ago, she might, evidently she believed what I was saying. And everybody else was wondering. Here she goes, you, you, you need hold for me. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's my God son, my spiritual God. <laughs> years ago, well, for someone that you, you don't, re I don't remember, there she is. She said, I remember what you said. And I saw the, the fly about what was going on over here. You know, that, that's, that's worth a thousand words. I thank you so much. You fulfilled my heart today because someone believed, not just myself. So like I said, just do justice, love mercy, and walk humble with the Lord. That's all I have to say. Would you believe it? It's up to you to unveil the stone. I will tell you, I will tell you before it goes the rest of the way, that she didn't just tell us what it should look like. She drew it, and it's still on my door. It's got this building. It's a little different. They made it a little fancier, didn't they? But I still have that duct tape to the door of my office. You can leave it up here until Ready? it's completed. Huh? Didn't yeah. I tell you to watch? Hey. <laughs> All right, you ready? Ta da! Yeah, take a look. Come on and come on and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to. I also want to bring Aaron Karpowitz up here to close us out because um, Aaron has put many, 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 many hours into this um, as the the executive director of Anne Arundel Community Development Services. I also I also see Delegate Heather Bagnell there. I did not know. Um, my note, you were not in my notes, but thank you, Delegate Bagnall has been a huge supporter of this project and helped us to get the state funding as well that we have. Oh, and Councilwoman Pickard is here, where? There you are. Anybody else that I'm missing? Probably. School board, Joanna Tobin. I talked about the school board. Well, yeah, I've talked about the whole school board already, but thank you, uh, Mr. Silkworth as well. Okay. Um, and. Most of you are dignitaries of some kind or another, so thank you for being here as a group. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive Pittman. Thank you for your leadership on this, and thanks to all of our elected officials who have helped make this happen, along with our local development council members. This has been great. It's been a great project to be a part of. Um, I just want to just quickly um, thank a few folks um, individually who, since this is kind of a construction celebration, talk about our team um, who's made this possible and really made the nuts and bolts of this building possible. Um, of course, the architect, uh, Murphy and Dittenhaver, um, Jonathan Taub, our, our, our main contact there, has been amazing, along with Kevin Sick, Stick, who's here today. Um, Bishop Palmer, Lisa Shore, Miss G, Carissa Kelly, and her team at G Department of Aging and Disabilities, and Lisa Monduro 
at the Boys and Girls Club. They are part of our design committee. They've met, you know, read, you know, they met since well before um, any any shovels went into the ground on this to help make this vision a reality. So thank you to that design team. Um, I also want to, of course, thank our construction team at TMI. The county executive mentioned um, Art Barge as the project manager and Jason Makoviak. I hope I got your name right, Jason. Jason is amazing. Um, he's the superintendent here, and um, his colleague Pete is um, going to be taking over for him. But couldn't have done this without you. You guys have kept the project on time and done an amazing job um, working with us and working through some complex issues. Um, of course, I want to thank my ACDS project director, Chris Mariyama. Chris um, has, you know, we both kind of came into ACDS as leaders at the same time. He stepped in uh, big shoes to fill into Bill Gibbons' um, shoes as project director, and um, you know, and, and as he left, also my predecessor Kathy Koch, who really kicked off this whole project on behalf of ACDS. Um, so he's helped make that transition move move seamlessly. And really, I I'm just amazed we're still on track with the original um, construction timeline. So thank you to Chris, um, and also just our many partners and our county partners, Christine Anderson and her team from Central Services, Jessica Lays um, from, from the Rec and Parks who will be managing some recreation programs here, um, and also our, our friends at the Board of Ed. Um, not only did they donate the land, but their team and facilities, Greg Stewart, we've been working together, we've become good buddies, and he's helped us work through a lot of issues here. I don't know if Greg's here, but thank you, Greg. And then I just want to say something about the community. Um, you know, obviously, we wouldn't be here without the community, without Miss G and all her advocacy. Lisa Shore, who unfortunately, due to a family emergency, couldn't be here today. I know she would be. Um, we wouldn't be here without their advocacy, but also for your engagement. Um, somebody really important to the project said to me the other day, she said, you know, I, we're happy. We're not just building a building. Um, you know, we're just happy that this is not just a building. It's something that's already started to engage the community throughout this process. And just an example of that is Nikki Butler and her history committee. They've researched the land that this was on. They've archived the articles about the 30 years that it took to get us here. They've compiled things for this capsule. We've got Jennifer Jackson, who's leading the programming committee, who's getting ideas from the community on everything from finishes in the community room to what programming people want to see. And then my awesome art committee. Um, I was kind of the de facto chair, I think, but the, the group has been great. Um, we've been able to bring in two uh, public art installations that are going to be a big part of this. Right here to my right, this is where the mosaic is going to be installed. Um, we're going to have beautiful mosaics on planter boxes and, and some site walls. And you'll see that soon. But Art with a Heart is the artist on that. You've probably seen them at some different engagement events at the library, in the community, at the senior center, having people like pinch those little pieces of clay. If you haven't pinched a piece of clay, you probably haven't been out much because they've been all around. So that was great. And then we also have our artist, our muralist, Nikki Butler. Nikki, are you here? Right there. Where, where is she? She was here. She was. Anyway, well, she might be up on the lift. So we're really excited. The, the good news with the rain date is that the mural has started going up. And Nikki's been out engaging the community for their ideas. And you might see some people you recognize um, who live in the community and advocate for the community in the mural um, as, it, as it gets finished. So really exciting stuff. Um, and, and that's all. So thanks, everybody.